Hello and welcome back to Jimbo's PC Builds. Today it's time to add another cooler to the Cooler League. <laughs> So without further ado, let's have a look at the cooler that we're going to be adding to the league in today's video. The cooler I'm going to be adding is the Be Quiet Dark Rock Elite. So Be Quiet, like Noctua, have developed a reputation for producing top of the line coolers. Like Noctua as well, they are not cheap. They do produce some smaller, cheaper coolers, but generally they're bigger, higher performing coolers aren't the cheapest so they're, they're aiming at the market where you want the performance you want the true cooling performance you've got to pay for it so it's going to be interesting to see uh, when we add it onto the, the bench and we'll I do the usual where I'll go through the install we'll go through all the scores and I'll give me final thoughts conclusion to see how it kind of compares to some of the other like AIOs out there which can tend to be more of the similar price all right so without further ado Let's get the cooler on the test bench. I will go through the install, and once we finish the install, I will give you my thoughts on the install. So for the base, the 1700 socket, it's they've got a screw that's got a square on the end, so you need to make sure it's lined up with the outside square, like so, and you can see it's flush. Then there's a rubber ring that goes over and there's actually a notch on the screw where the rubber ring has got to go inside. So install wise, it's actually relatively simple. There's a couple of things that I really liked about the install. It has a backplate with prongs like a lot of other coolers do. What it sets this apart is you've got adjustable, the prongs adjust as other ones do, but instead of being held on, these have little rubber rings that go on, which basically keep it on, but also act as a cushion when it's budding against the motherboard so you're not putting too much clamping force on the motherboard and scratching it or anything else like that or etc etc et so that was the first bit the second bit was and i produced two shorts on this was the fact that the front fan is adjustable so you can adjust it to the height of the memory you have uh, on, on in your pc now when i first did the install I didn't realize that the front fan actually moved up and down so I was like oh okay this doesn't fit so I can't test it. Then uh, after producing the short Be Quiet themselves actually came on and said hey the front fan adjusts and my response to that was yeah but it's not kind of covered very well in the instructions. It's mentioned in an instruction video um, on YouTube that they put out but in the actual instructions that come with the cooler itself it's not really made that clear. So. That's on me. I put the original short out saying don't fit. 
But then I put another short out that said, hey, it was on me, I was wrong, and it actually adjusts, and I showed how to adjust the fan. So um, I'll put like a link to the, uh, the second uh, short up in the top, so you can go and see how you actually adjust the front fan. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, yeah, the, the the install is a pretty much a breeze. They has you'd expect with the investment that you're making that, that uh, be quite cooler. They include a long screwdriver as well. So and oh, just generally, the top plate comes off nice and easy. It clamps on with um, magnetic force on the top. The lighting is subtle but great on the top plate. The middle fan comes out a lot easier than I thought it would because it's all, you don't have to screw anything at the top, it's all magnets to hold it in. So all in all, yeah, it's an easy cooler to install. It's, it, you can tell the engineering investment that's gone into the cooler itself to make that install a lot easier. All right, so now I've taken you through what I think of the install. Now let's go through the scores and after that, I'll give you my final thoughts and conclusion. Base temps. The Dark Rock Elite had a base temp of 18 degrees Celsius. The base temperature is in an indication of where it starts and it's the baseline, so it really doesn't tell us that much. Base sound, again, to achieve that base, base temp, it wasn't really having to work very much, which you'd hope so because it gives us an indication that as a baseline, it's a half decent cooler. Cinebench score, it finished with a Cinebench score of 27,346, which kind of puts it in the middle of a pile. As I've mentioned in previous videos, we're kind of seeing a grouping of scores now, and I'm still thinking that Thermal Right Phantom Spirit uh, 120 score is a misnomer. It's kind of miles away, so uh, I don't, don't, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that at this stage. But either way, the Be, be Quiet Dark Rock Elite finished middle of the pile. Max Temps. It finished with a max temp of 76, which has only been beaten by two coolers, which is just amazing. And one of those coolers was an AIO. So from a cooling perspective only, the cooler is doing fantastically well. So to achieve that, let's see what the, the actual max sound was. And while it wasn't a little jet engine <laughs> that could, should we say, it still hit a max sound of 51 decibels, so quite quite loud but it has got the two fans because it's got the one in the middle and the one at the front so i would say based on cooling performance only it's in pretty good shape you know it with the sound that came out of it and the cooling performance i think it can if it handle a 12900k like this it can pretty much handle anything scoring ranges stay as they are no change there cooler league table so the Be Quiet Dark Rock Leap is firmly placed at fourth in the table. The bass sound, give it a score of six. Uh, the average score was five. The average max temp was three. The average max sound was two. And the price is three and ease of install is three. And the design build was three, which gives it a score of 25. It goes above the Noctua NHD12 L Chromax uh, based on the tiebreaker, which is max temp. So pretty much it's in the top tier of coolers. So let's look at more of more of a detailed analysis of the Be Quiet Dark Rock Elite. It's got two fans and its starting price, the, well, the purchase price I got it when I actually bought the cooler was $99.90. So the score excluding price is 22, which gives you a cost per point of $4.54, which is pretty good. It's not as better than some, but it's pretty good. Now, with a max temp of 76, you get a basically a cost per C below 100 of $4.16. So while the starting price of this cooler, it's in the same kind of bracket as the MA824 Stealth, which it's an, it's an expensive cooler, but it shows that if you spend the money, you're getting that cooling performance. So it, again, it falls into the bracket of you wanted to spend a decent amount of money on a decent cooler, you know, you can't argue with the value that you get in terms of cost per point and cost per below 100C. All right, there's the scores. I'll go on to my final thoughts and conclusion. So my final thoughts. As you've seen from the cooling performance in the scores, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's, it's an investment cooler. You want top line cooling performance, you should buy this cooler. It's up there with the MA824 Stealth, where basically you're paying the money and you're getting the performance. I think where I would say this kind of falls behind the MA824 Stealth a little bit is it was a tiny bit louder when it was at full load. 
Not much, but it was. So therefore, do I recommend this cooler? If you want to invest the money and you want to get the cooling performance every day of the week and twice on Sunday, it's engineered well, the, the, it looks fantastic, the lighting's pretty good, the cooling performance is good, and it's not that loud. So all in all, it's a great cooler. And you know, it's, you know, uh, the way that I do the scoring on this is aimed around a whole performance of the cooler from value uh, to cooling and everything else. But this is a cooler that really focuses on that cooling performance. So you've got to keep that in mind if you want to buy this cooler. But for me, yeah, because I'm really a fan of cooling performance, it gets a big thumbs up. All right, I hope you found that information useful. If you did, please toss a like on the video. If you didn't find it useful and you've got any further comments on how we can improve the information provided in the videos, please toss a comment down below. If you've got any questions on the cooler, please toss a comment down below. I'll, I'll try my best to answer questions whenever I can. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Subscribers are always welcome because I've not got a massive amount of them, but it would be great to, uh, to increase the size of the community. Um, from hitting the bell icon, I try and do one video a month, uh, you know, work commitments and everything else makes it difficult for me to do more than that, so hitting the bell icon means that you won't miss when I actually get a video out. Alright, that's all the YouTube stuff done, thank you for watching, and as always, take care.